Hi everyone, my name is Jay Bassani and welcome to Curves Classroom Workshops. In this video I'm going to be talking about the acting process as a whole. Uh, just an introduction into some things, from the way you think and what you should be focusing on, the mindset, all the way through to the basics of breaking down a script, how to get into the acting business and what you should expect and try to do in an audition with. Let's get started. Right, mindset. What do I mean? Well, when I talk about mindset, I'm talking about getting yourself in a position where you're comfortable, you're happy, you're confident, and you can fully enjoy what you're doing. We're always going to be nervous. We're always going to want to do a good job because we care. We're always going to be right. Well, not be right, but we're going to want to be right, because we care. But sometimes that can be a problem. It can hold us back, because we lose focus of what we should be doing. When we're acting in a scene, when we're in a rehearsal, when we're in an audition, whatever the setting is. If we're focusing on... Am I doing this good? Am I doing this right? Do they like me? In that moment, you're not, fo you're not present, you're not focusing on the other person. The secret to acting is this all about the other person. Someone sits in front of you and you talk to them. And you have to genuinely try and talk to that person in front of you and change them. Now we have to get our mindset right and we have to trust ourselves that that's enough. And how we do that is by, first of all, understanding the difference between what an actor is and an artist is. <clears throat> so an actor's job is to try and get a job. The artist's job is to do the best acting possible. They do link, but at different stages. So firstly, if I'm an actor, I'm looking from the acting point of view of I have to get a good agent that puts me in a good position to get good work, to get good audition, auditions, get a good role. While I'm doing that, I'm looking at what kind of works out there, what's best suited to me, what do I need to do to better myself, what skills do I need to do to improve my chances, to build my CV the accents that I need to learn. All these kind of things are the actor's job. In order to market themselves so that they can work. So what all of that means is the actor has to focus on how they can put themselves in the best position to get work and keep getting work. For example, if you're on YouTube, the presentation of your setup, how you look, is a big part of it. The stuff that you're talking about. You know, you watch YouTube videos and they advertise certain things. They say this video is sponsored by this person. All of that is the business side to help that actor grow. But the artist side is the work that they do on the material. So the artist's job is to live in that moment and to fully change the other person. We want to almost make that person in front of us believe like what's happening is real. We have to get into that mindset and we get into that artistic mindset by doing the work. The artistic mindset isn't about, I hope I get the job, I hope I'm doing this right. That's what the actor worries about beforehand. When you're in that moment as an artist, you're talking to the people in front of you, you're really trying to communicate with them, you're using your voice, your physicality, all the skills that you've gained, and you're trusting yourself and believing in yourself and making a promise to yourself that you're going to try your best to change the other person. You leave yourself alone. And I have three simple rules in how I go about doing that. The first rule is courage. 
you always have to be courageous. Think of a time, we're going to do an exercise once this first section is finished. But for now, I want you to think of just a simple time where you've been brave. And think at how it pays off. Courage is so important when you're an actor. Because you have to be brave enough to look silly. You have to be brave enough to get it wrong. You have to be brave enough to get it right. You have to be brave enough to give yourself a chance. You have to have courage. Once you go, okay, I'm going to be courageous. I'm going to decide this is what I'm going to do. You have to have this self-respect, which brings us on to the second one. Self-respect. Self-respect doesn't mean I matter more than anyone else. Self-respect means if I've decided to be courageous, I'm going to follow that through. If I make a choice, I'm going to follow that through. The most important thing actors do is make bold choices and stick to them. It doesn't matter if they're right or wrong. Because a director can see this is a brave, courageous actor who has the self-respect to stick to what they said they were going to do. They were going to try and change that person in the way they knew how, and they're going to take whatever the person opposite gives them and go with it. They have the self-respect to be in that moment and to follow through what they said they were going to. The last point is kindness. You have to be kind to others and to yourself. There's no point beating yourself up beating others up about the work that's going on and feeling sorry for yourself for too long. Be kind to yourself. Give yourself a chance. Allow yourself to keep failing. Kindness is saying, I was brave. I was courageous. I had the self-respect. It didn't work out. Well done for trying. Let's go again. That's the most important thing in an actor's mindset. Secondly, the last point rather is when we talk about mindset, I want you to try and understand something I call byproducts. So what byproducts means is, let's put it in a simple example. If you're at home, and you want to make your sibling or your parents or someone happy. You may go downstairs, grab a drink, pass it to them. They might smile and say thank you. Your goal is to get them to smile and say thank you. Your goal as an actor is to go into that room and get that person to go, wow, I felt like I was really there, great job, good acting. But how we get there is by focusing on something that causes that person to smile. So we just said, we go downstairs and we get that person a drink. How we do that is what is going to dictate whether that person smiles or not. So if I go downstairs, I grab some water, I give it to them and they look at it and go, what are you doing? And say, here, here's a drink, be happy. It's not going to work. If I went downstairs and I think, oh, what does that person really like? Okay, I'm going to put all my time and effort into making sure I make the best hot chocolate, the best drink possible. Then when I give it to them, I know that they will smile. You might be thinking, well, what does any of this have to do with acting? Well, we've talked about being the artist, right? Being the artist is what leads you to getting a job. You have to focus on that moment. This is really, really important. To stay in the moment of something, you have to make it about the other person. And we're going to get onto that when I talk more about how to break down a script and actually how to use the lines that you've learned and change the other person in front of you. If I'm in a room and I'm going to keep saying this point, if I try and make them happy with what I'm doing, 
if I try to impress them, if I hope that they like it, it won't work. Because I've effectively just given them a drink and said, be happy, please. But if we focus on, I've done the work, I'm in the room, it's all about the other person. I'm going to use my voice, my physicality. I'm really going to let them affect me. And I'm going to change them without worrying about how good I am in that moment. Am I doing this right? That chatter that you have in the back of your head, that doubt. We have to be brave enough to let that go quiet. and Push it to one side. And say, right now, it's about changing that person in front of me. And the byproduct of doing that is that the director, the cast director, who's ever there, whoever, whoever you want to make happy, will more likely become happy with the job you're doing. Because you focus on what it is that you're actually there to do, which is act, not to impress them. So let's move on to how to break down the script. Okay, in this section, we're going to look at how to break down a script. We're just going to look at the basics of how we can find out what our character wants and how they go about getting it. So what we need to focus on first is simply reading the scene. So in this scene, we know Katie wants to find out from her granny what happens to animals when they die. That's the whole point of this scene. So what we do is we write out, okay, what is my character's task? So we're all going to look at it from Katie's point of view. So Katie's task in this is to find out what happens to animals when they die. That's what she wants to know. That's her whole focus in the scene. So when you're talking to a person opposite or when you're in this scene to stop you from getting too nervous, worrying about doing it right, worrying about the lights doing this, this is happening, I'm on stage here. You have to forget all of that. And the only thing that you have to focus on is your task. And Katie's task is to get Granny to tell her what happens when animals die. The second thing, now we found our task, what we have to do is go back and go through each line and highlight punctuation. So punctuations are question marks, commas, full stops, things like that. Now the point of doing this is we can now look at exactly what Katie is doing in each line to get her task. So if her task is to get Granny to tell her what happens when they die, here our question mark says she asks a question. So Katie gets Granny's attention by asking her an open question. She says, Granny Island? Granny Island says, hmm? Now she's got her attention, she can ask her what she really wants to know. She can try and achieve her task. What happens to animals when they die? Another question mark. Granny Island says, what do you mean? So in order for Katie to achieve her task, which is to get Granny Island to tell her what happens to animals when they die, she has to make her point very clear. And if we look at a full stop, that tells me that Katie is making a clear point. She's not asking a question. She knows the point that she's trying to make. So in this part, up until this full stop, Katie makes her point. Then there's a beat. A beat is a pause. So now Katie's made her point. She's made it clear what she means. She can now ask the question again. Granny Island will now know what she's talking about. This is how punctuation helps us. 
If we look at the second page, here we can see again, Granny says something, Katie makes a point about how she feels. And we can see that because of the full stops. An exclamation mark, it gives us an idea of how to say the line because it's something that she says strongly. She's giving her strong opinion about what she feels. For example, here, Granny Ireland said, like you shouldn't, yes, I know, you shouldn't get fond of them. She's getting almost a little bit annoyed and we can tell because of the exclamation marks. That helps us to play each line, to know what we have to do in each line. Okay, the next point I want you to look at is if you can get a highlighter or a pencil and we're just gonna look at this first page. Once we've looked at the punctuation, once we've found our task, once we have an idea of what we're going to do in each line, ask the question, make a point, ask a question, we're gonna look at how the words in the scene and each line help us to achieve our task. So let's say if we highlight a word in this part here, well, people have funerals. Funerals is written in slightly italic writing, so it's slanted. So I'll write funerals and people. Why do I do that? Well, Katie wants to know what? What happens to animals when they die? Granny Island's unsure of what Katie means. So Katie says, well, people have funerals. Then she gives an example. Then here, what she wants to know is, but what happens to animals when they die? I use this as a mean to make that a lot clearer. When I'm learning it, I know the first bit, I'm talking about what happens to people. In the second bit, I'm asking the question about what happens to animals. For this, it's very obvious, but you can get some scenes where it's a little harder to read. It's a little harder to understand what's going on. And using things, finding the task, what your character really wants to get from the other person, um, highlighting punctuation to see how they go about doing it. Question, she asks a question, she makes a point, she asks a question. Then going through and highlighting lines that will help you make your point clearer. Get to your task quicker. For example, what we did here. She makes it very clear. People have funerals. I know that, but what I want to know is what do animals have? Now Granny Ireland can answer the question and Katie can achieve her task. So in this bit, we're going to be talking about getting into the industry. There's so many different options available for actors to learn and, and to work. The most important thing is learning how to do your craft. We've talked about mindset, we've talked about the basics of breaking down a script. Um, but we need to be able to be in a position where we can use those things. So first and foremost, let's look at how to learn acting, getting into the industry. There's the conventional method of drama school. I went to East 15 drama school. Um, it's a three year course, full time. You work from 8.30 to 6 p.m. Um, and you, the entire day, you focus on voice, movement, plays, film, screen, everything. Um, and then at the end of that, you have a showcase and you, if you're lucky enough, you may be picked up by an agent. The acting agent will then put you forward 
for work and auditions and, and things like that. That's a conventional group doing. If you're not picked up by an agent or you decide drama school is not for me, there's many different courses out there that you can sign up to. Um, you know, if you, you do your research on the web, City Academy do great short courses and part-time courses alongside you, you know, studying or working or even if you're in a summer holiday break, you can do those things. Um, and they're like little masterclasses on how to act on the camera, the exercises that you can use for your voice. And then the rest is about you going away and practicing those skills. Um, as for getting an agent, if you don't have a showcase, um, it's about getting headshots done. So it's a clear image of you. Um, there's many ways to do that. Simple Google searches on headshot photographers. If there's an actor that you like, find their headshot, see who took it. Usually there's a little stamp at the bottom that says shot by so-and-so. Um, and you may have friends who take pictures and at the start, all you need to do is have a good clear picture from your shoulders, chest above, just showing them who you are. You can send those pictures off um, to agencies. So if you go online and you research, acting agents it will come up with the list and then you click on their website and it will say you know submissions submissions is you submitting your headshot and your cv and a covering letter about why you want to be part of that agency um, those emails and those submissions are really important you want to try and make them personal you want to try and give that agent an understanding of why you want to work with them. And it can be as simple as you have these actors on your books who I really admire. I'd like to be like them and have their careers. This is what I bring as a person. I, you know, I work hard. I, I have these skills. I like doing this acting. Um, I think I will be good in these kind of TV shows or this theatre. And then you, you wait and see for your reply. In between doing that, having a showreel is really good because a showreel is a film footage of you shooting a scene with someone else um, and it shows your ability to act. It gives them something to look at to go, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, they can act. And also the type of actor they are, the type of skills they have, how they look, um, well, I, I, can, I can work with them. Um, I can get them into rooms and get them into auditions. Um, yeah, that's that's really the the simple, clear, and unobvious routes that, that most people take. Um, if you don't get an agent, you know it's not the be or an end all. Um, you want to try and get involved in something called spotlight. And Spotlight has castings and auditions that are posted on it, and you can apply for them yourself. Um, to get into Spotlight, you it's a catch-22, really. I think you either have to have done some work or you have to have trained. Um, but creating your own work, going to do what you're doing now at the youth theatres and, and, you know, things like Nottingham TV workshop. They're so, so, so important because it's not only learning, it's work. It's something for someone to come and watch, you know. It's something that if you film something out there, you have that to show um, people and to send to directors and to casting directors and things like that and to agents and, and so you can start generating things yourself from your bedroom sometimes, filming with someone else, or just get out there with a the phone and, and give it a go. Content is key. Um, equity. Equity is, is a big part of the British acting industry in that it's a union, which means it protects actors. Uh, all contracts are signed through something called an equity contract, especially in theatre, 
uh, in the UK. Professional contracts, which mean you can only work these hours. This is your minimum wage. Um, and also a cool thing about equity is once you're able to, to sign up through that, um, you're likely to be the only one with your name. Um, for example, my name is safe and secure, uh, my acting name in equity. Um, yeah, that's the basics of getting into the industry. Uh, next, we're going to talk a little bit about the audition process. Finally, we're going to talk about the audition process. Now, the audition process is always a nerve-wracking experience for actors, um, especially if you've never done it before. So I'm going to give you a little insight into how it works and some exercises and some focus points to make the experience fun and, and enjoyable and the best for you. After all, that's why we do it, because we love doing it. Um, so you may have an audition through your own endeavours or through what an agent has sent you. You've learned your lines. They'll send you, at, you know, the casting workshop, the castings director's address of their office, a time. And you turn up about always early, 15, 20 minutes early. Um, you sign in. You give them your name, say, I'm here to see so and so for this. They'll say, great, thanks, take a seat. And you'll wait in the waiting room until the assistant or whoever it is comes out, says your name and says, great, we're ready for you in the room now. Um, and then you'd go in and you'll have a small chat, often about how you're doing, you know, just normal things. How's your day been? Any questions? Um, and if you have questions, by all means, ask them, but don't feel that you have to say or do anything. You just have to be yourself, which is often the hardest thing. But remember the things we've talked about with an actor and an artist. When you're going in there, it's about the work. When you're sitting in that waiting room and you're nervous and you're excited and you don't know what to expect and you don't know how the room will be and will they like me and get through that. And then afterwards, think about the task. What are you trying to do? What is your character trying to do to the other person? Start with the first one and just have the courage to follow it through. Focus on trying to achieve your task. Take in the other person who's reading and try and change it. As for what they can ask you to do inside the room, if you've had learned the lines, you'll come in, you may stand on an X that they put down. You might sit down if there's a chair, uh, if the scene requires it. Um, they'll ask you to potentially look at the camera, say your name, your agent, and then they might say, great, can I see your profiles? All that means is I say my name, I say my agent, my profiles as I look this way, and then I look that way. Um, and then they'll go, great, whenever you're ready. And if it's your line, when you're ready, you say your line, or you wait for the other person to speak. That simple. The key to it is simplicity. Have fun, keep it simple. Make your bold choice and stick to it. If the director says, great, um, all right, I see what you did there. Um, and they like you to do it in a different way. That's not a bad thing. They just want it slightly different. Don't read into it. They'll be impressed with the fact that you can go, okay, you want it that way. I'll make sense of it. I'll change the other person in that way. Um, and, and, and that's it. It, it's, it doesn't have to be a, a big deal. It isn't a big deal. It's important to do the work. And it's important to be brave enough to follow through with your choice when you're in the room and to be open enough to, to change. Um, and as long as you know you've given your best and you are a nice person, that's all that matters.